Mm. Well, good morning, good people. Mm. Good Taco Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. We are here at the Red Brick House, and my goodness, wow. It is kind of cray cray. It is kind of cray cray when you think about what's happening in the NFL. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, I was talking to my friend Anthony at Home Depot down here and stuff. He's a Commanders fan and things. And I said we were going to be down here for uh, Thanksgiving and stuff and watching the games and things like, well, can I show up in a Commanders, you know, gear and all? I said, sure, man, no problem. And uh, he was going on about, you know, Sam Howe leads the NFL in yards, which is which is true. They are. They, they are leading. They are slinging the rock like crazy, like they haven't in forever. Although Sam Howe does have a lot of drops and he does have a lot of interceptions, which are hurting his team and things. And their defense is not stopping people at all. Um, it's funny where we were with quarterbacks and quarterback rankings you know to a man everybody had pat mahomes as number one joe burrow number two and pretty much josh allen as the number three quarterback in the nfl hell madden said he's our guy he's our guy on the cover of madden now of course we got little old dak prescott that some people said he's not even in the conversation of being in the top 15 really and it's kind of cray cray where um josh allen is right now josh allen leads the nfl in interceptions and i really i want to hear today if they're going to go ahead and hold him accountable now, the first interception he had, you know, wasn't his fault. The second one sure was. The fumble between the exchange definitely was his. He dropped the ball before he got it to the running back. And so you have Josh Allen, who is literally ass-ass right now. If this was Dak Prescott, oh my Lord, the internet would literally break. So later I'm going to listen to Get Up this morning. I haven't listened to him yet uh, dissecting the game. And I want to hear how much they actually put it on Josh Allen. I bet you they treat him with kid gloves. Now for the Cowboys, we are off, of course, today like all of the players in the NFL. They get back on the field tomorrow getting ready for the Carolina Panthers. And the Dallas Cowboys, it's kind of um, crazy that right now is the healthiest we've been. I don't want to jinx it, but Terrence Steele looked much better this past week. I know it was only against the Giants. Uh, Tyron Smith has now got three games in a row. And we thus far didn't hear about any more injuries. Let's knock on wood. Hope that it stays that way. And um, the Cowboys offense seems to be going through a progression of getting guys going. Now, now, here's what's funny. Here's what's funny to me is listening to the trolls, no matter what happens. You know, I've said A.J. Brown is, the, you know, one of the best receivers in football, without a doubt. I mean, you got Tariq Hill, you got A.J. Brown. But I said coming up in the rearview mirror, you have to put C.D. Lamb because C.D. Lamb is only like 35 yards behind. And when you think about the early games that C.D. Lamb had where he was under 50 yards in a game, the fact that he's only 35 behind A.J. Brown, who they promoted that he had had five games of over 125 yards. Nobody's ever done that before. Nobody. Look at A.J. Brown. And then, of course, we got C.D. Lamb doing 10 receptions and 150 yards three games in a row. We'll see if he does it. And he's putting the league on notice that he's the best one. But I got an eagle troll out there who literally says man cd's not even over a thousand yards man aj brown's already there shut the f up you you're stupid well okay like i said i i look at where aj was way ahead and cd was back here but cd he is getting up right there he is neck and neck we'll see where they are when the season ends but i can't wait to see that and it seems like the cowboys offense is going through 
like I said, their progressions where we started out where we were, like I said, we were trying to run the football and pass to the tight ends. We pissed off C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb, of course, kind of, you know, kind of moped a little bit. Him and Dak had a conversation. And then all of a sudden, C.D. blows up. Last week, you know, we heard um, Brandon Cooks kind of say, you know, I'm you know, I'm a professional. I'm going to bide my time and, you know, I'm going to keep fighting and everything else. And Dak talking about him. All of a sudden now, boom, Brandon Cooks is heating up with 171 yards. So if you are a receiver with the Cowboys or a playmaker, what you need to do is kind of, you know, hey, I got to say the right things and stuff and get Dak involved. Because the way he's slinging the rock right now, I still want to know, do you still rate Josh Allen higher than Dak Prescott at this moment? Now, it's gotten to the point where now Trayvon Diggs is basically saying, we got to get Stefan out of Buffalo. And I'm beginning to think that the ship has definitely sailed on the Buffalo Bills. They've got the third worst schedule left in the NFL. And it seems like the ship is sinking fast. Sean McDermott is now getting uh, a lot of uh, flack. Josh Allen, you know, is beginning to look like a bum. Stefan Diggs is definitely itching to get out. And so it may be that that team gets blown up at the end of the season. And would it be inconceivable because we know how much the Diggs brothers love each other and want to play together on the same team? It might not be a far scratch, a stretch for them to be able to play together. The question is, would the Cowboys want that? That's the big question. That is the real big question. But could you imagine, just imagine, Stefan Diggs here with Dak Prescott? Dak Prescott, hmm. Is Dak Prescott a top five quarterback? Go ahead, la la laugh now, laugh now. But here's where we are right now with Dak. Because now keep in mind, Dak was way down below early part of the season because the offense was throttled because Mike McCarthy just wanted to run the damn ball. But here's where it gets to be interesting, okay? And I don't want to hear, oh, well, you just beat the Giants. Because when the commanders took the Eagles, and I'm looking at the Eagles and saying they're the number one rated team in the NFL. They are far better talent-wise, coaching-wise, and everything else-wise. Ron Rivera is a dead man walking. I don't look at the same talent on the field with the Washington Commanders as I do with the Eagles. They took the Eagles to overtime. They should have won this game, uh, the second one, in another shootout if Terry McLaurin holds on to the ball. And what did we hear? Well, it's a division game. Uh, it's a, division games are always close. Not when it's Cowboys versus the Giants. The Cowboys blow out the Giants? Oh, it was only the Giants, man. You know, pfft. what happened to it being division games? I'm, I'm asking for a friend here. But here's where we are. If, if you say that Dak Prescott's not a top 10 quarterback, in total passing yards this season, seventh. Passing touchdowns, touchdown passes, he's tied for fourth. Passer rating, he's third. QBR, third. Completion percentage, he's second. Passing yards per attempt, fourth. So it's not dinking and dunking. EPA per play, he's third. So of all those metrics that are there, the only one, that he's not at a top five is passing yards. And some of those teams out there have, you know, more games than Dak Prescott. Amazingly enough, though, he's not one of those quarterbacks that are turning over the football. And, you know, I, I would love to hear some of the talking heads say, you know, maybe Dak Prescott turning over the ball was just a one year thing, you know, and he really actually you look at his career, he actually takes care of the football. And the fact that Dak Prescott has 10 400-yard games tied with Pat Mahomes, where the next closest person is five currently playing in the NFL. That's pretty freaking amazing.
So let's listen in to Get Up this morning about dissecting the Buffalo Bills losing to the Broncos at home that got jacked up by the Miami Dolphins 70 to 20. I, I, I can't wait to see. Are they going to light up Josh Allen? Buffalo side. Uh, we practiced two or three times that this week, the substitution from, from dime to field goal block. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we didn't execute it. So it's inexcusable. It sucks. It sucks. Shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. Um, it's a lot of bad football. A lot of bad football. Well, that's it sucks or I suck, which is it? Put your feet up. we got a lot of time to yeah, dive okay. into this because that's the craziest finish of the NFL season. Go ahead, Dan. I didn't, I didn't mean you, you but you're welcome to. Okay, okay, let's start with what was the, when he said you just reacted strongly to something the coach just I'm said. I'm looking at the bottom said, of that. We, we, you know, we, Two we, costly penalties final dime, drive. To field too many men block. on uh, we, field goal. Why are you in dime? They're kneeling the ball 28-yard pass interference let's penalty. Get, let's get ready for it. Why are we trying to hurry in the end? Like, there's going to be 20 seconds left. We're going to hurry it back off. Like, just get lined up in it. They're not going to go run a play. No one's risking this. Just, you just, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't let get let it me though. talk to my defensive player, Dominique. This, tell me what should happen. And, and all the Bills fans who are in my phone this morning and oh. all over Twitter who are furious, who <laughs> is this to blame for oh. this candidly inexcusable mistake? Field goals are hard to block. So normally on defense, we do not have traditionally a special field goal block unit. You just have the normal base defense in your field goal block. And as Jeff pointed out, the Broncos kneeled the ball three times in the row. Why are we panicking to do a substitution? At some point, put your field goal block unit out there. Yeah. And it's normally the base defense. Mm-hmm. So if there are two defensive ends or three defensive ends, one of the three of y'all need to look at each other like the Spider-Man meme and all point. No, all three of us aren't supposed to be here. <laughs> Someone get off the field. And the fact that they had three downs to get it right, and they were shocked. Yeah. At the end, like, I understand why the Broncos are rushing people on and rushing people off because the field goal unit is different than the offense. For the Bills, why are you also in panic mode? Right. They, we know what's happening. Look, Everyone the knows. Are coming you, on. you know why Russ is running to the side and kneeling the ball? It's a set up a field goal. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so I just want everyone to, to see that again, to make this point. Cindy, if, if you can, uh, our director, Cindy Morello, if you could start it again from the beginning of that, what, the second Russell uh, snaps the ball and takes that knee, the Bills look like they're substituting about half the players yeah. on their field, and yeah. you're saying there's no reason for this. Watch how many people are running out. It's like they're surprised. Right. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, they're kicking a field goal? Yeah. We all knew. The, a minute and a half ago, we all knew they were trying to kick a field goal. And I think it's fair to be critical of Sean Payton for putting his um, offense in that kind of rushed operation situation. And that's why that's probably why they missed the field goal. But they let him off the hook because the coach on the other side was even less prepared Dumb. for the inevitable. It's it's bad coaching at the end of this game on both sides. Hey, Danny, I mean, you, you, you can the frustration, I'm sure you're hearing it from friends, fans and friends as well. I mean, that... That is about as bad a way to lose a football game as I've I've seen in a long time. It's bad. And, look, a lot of the frustration of the Bills fans is focused on uh, Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator, right, because the offense was so good under Dayball and hasn't – but if you look at their offense this year, I mean, they're tough. Has anybody said anything about Josh Allen's turnovers? Everything. Like, the Bills' problems are in the margins, right? It's turnovers. Oh, there we go. It's mistakes like this. And this is not what we're used to from a team that has been one of the very best in the league now for almost a half decade. And I think that's that you, you lose. You're down five starters on the defensive side. So of the we, ball. we show the Your strip fumble. Okay, straight. let's see if we Significant. show the interceptions. These they almost won the Look, game. They've shown this. They, they've shown right. this Teams have fumble the ball over four three times. times. Okay. Are, are over for their last 32. Like yeah. like you do not win when you commit four turnovers. So okay. And they were so they show this one. Okay. All right. Winning anyway. They're still good, but they're making way too many mistakes. Now, and for those that say it wasn't on him, the pass was a little on the high to, side. To uh, Fox's point, the the zero blitz, running it twice in a row after you yeah. put, after you've sacked them, and then you're going to go run this blitz again. He, they're lucky that Russell Wilson underthrew the ball because he's wide open. If Russell Wilson puts that ball, it's a touchdown. It's not just going to be an interference. Everybody's upset about interference because a jump ball. If he'd have thrown the ball, it's a touchdown because he runs right by them. So he put them in a bad situation to begin with. And by the way, 
Talk about everybody's trying to blame the offense, the defense, with Leslie Frazier. <laughs> Look at this. Defense efficiency, first in the league since 2017. I'm sorry. To this is a bullshit. They're 16th this, this year. That's a big difference, right? So you talk about areas yeah. of where you're winning in the margins. That's an issue, right? That's an issue for me because situations like the I don't the believe this team and the head coach. Being they have the not said that, that he had two interceptions and a fumble. There. Their defense is playing the interception well, they show is a tipped right. one. Like, How about the, the one that was just I bad? Be, being 16 after losing a ton of starters in not just starters, their best players, yes. like the guys for their Milano. team White, who goes right. to the Pro Bowl, the yep. guys from their team who we're talking about making a difference they aren't playing those guys aren't there from the cornerback to the linebacker to the safety they are missing them so holding this game tight i thought the defense did everything they could the thing about the zero blitz as a defensive player and as a defensive back zero blitz is hard but i like that aggressiveness because it narrows down the options for the opponent the tough thing was you can't have a safety on judy in the slot you have to make the proper substitutions and proper matchups in that situation. Because he just ran by, right by him. Right right right. A quarterback in that situation should know he either has to get rid of it quick or it's going deep. That's what you do in zero blitz. You're like, all right, that's right. not out now. Now let me run deep. And he yeah. was confused Explain about that. Explain to people. If, so offenses, we don't really have an answer for zero blitz. Exactly. It's either ball comes out now, something short, or ball goes deep. Unbelievable. The going to hit his third step and just Because there's not – we're short a guy, right? And so you know on the back side, right. yeah, it's, it's, it's a chaos play for us. So I, there's only one or two we things. Often, is we play. often hear people get critical of defensive coordinators for calling zero blitzes. I like them because the point is they don't have an answer for it. There's, yeah. no, there's no play right. for right. zero blitz. You run it back to back. Even in that situation, if Murray, had, or if Murphy had done the right technique, he would have been fine. So it's a good play in those situations, but you have to be able to tackle well and you have to be disciplined with your eyes, which they were not. But, so let's say something that I think just needs to be said. And the head coach himself said it. That loss is inexcusable. Yes, he just made the point. They turned the ball over four times, four times. and we're still an eye blink away from winning. Why? Because they're by a wide the margin yeah. the better team. Yes, for sure. They keep losing games they have no business losing. And one of the things that must Un- be asked, and I, I would say maybe Are you serious? Wait, are, are you are you are you really serious? Are we talking about the same people that counted interceptions for Dak Prescott in training camp? Are we uh, seriously? No. Uh, Dudes, you don't even show that terrible interception that led to three points for Denver before the half. You don't even, I mean, it wasn't even close. You don't say... Josh Allen, two interceptions, two costly interceptions. You don't say Josh Allen. They didn't even show the Josh Allen fumbled exchange. They literally did nothing to say Josh Allen. See, and this is the problem. This is the freaking problem because you get hammered in the head that when the Cowboys, even when the Cowboys win, even when the Cowboys win, that Dak Prescott, oh my God, Dak, Pre- he's a turnover machine. Dak Prescott, look, and they show the interception. Even though they blow somebody out, they still hammered in your head. Dak Prescott and these interceptions, they got to stop. Josh Allen freaking leads the league in interceptions. He freaking leads the league. And it's not even close. The dude literally leads the league in turnovers in the time that he's been there. He's got 93 the Buffalo Bills have more talent by far, by far, than the Denver Broncos playing at home. They should have blown Denver out, but they didn't because they kept turning over the football. And doesn't anybody keep Josh Allen accountable? No, they don't. Not at all. Josh Allen is the darling. We still, Dak Prescott can go out and have a great game, have heck record-breaking games, and they still kill Dak Prescott. Yeah, well, it's only the Giants. Well, let's see what happens when it comes to playoffs. Well, okay, at least Dak Prescott's not turning the ball over here against sorry teams like Josh Allen just did. Like, remember... Denver got beat by 50 points. Tua scored 70 points on this team, on this defense. And Josh Allen is supposed to be the guy 
a th- the third best quarterback in the NFL, and you lose at home? Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Sorry. This, this just made me lose. I, I literally ready to spit my coffee out this morning. But I appreciate y'all. And um, we'll see where it goes. Peace out.